Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Joshua Ratto and your co-host. If you're new to this work, please start with episode 1. Intermediate students should start with episode 98 and advanced students can start with episode 200. With me as always to share her insights and her wisdom is a spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. How's it going today, Kelly? It's good, it's good. How are you? Oh, you know, we're rocking and rolling. Um, you know, we're getting ready that pre-retrograde and just uh, feeling a lot of intense energy. And I'm seeing it across the board and uh, all the all the classes I'm in and I'm just in the community in general. So just a lot of shifts going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, How about I'm you? I'm desperately trying to get a contract signed before Mercury went retrograde because you don't want to sign your contracts before, you know, in the middle of it. I was desperately trying to get that done, and we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because the contract wasn't right, the contract wasn't right, the contract wasn't right. And then I finally went to pay for it, and I went. I had to do an ACH because she, she didn't want to do a balance. It, it, anyway, she wanted it as an ACH. And I was like, here, I'll send you the money. And then all, the ACH bounced back and said, oh, you've exceeded your, your limit for the day of what you can do. And I was like, I had no idea I had a limit, so now I have to pay her again tomorrow. And I'm just like... What is this? But it's it's just been this cluster. I mean, everything has been wrong. Everything has been misinterpreted. Everything is is unclear. And it's it's not anybody's fault. It just is. I mean, it's the eclipse season and then this Mercury retrograde. Oh my god, I am terrified, <laughs> right? It's gonna, you know, that's the bad news. Good news is, is that this is when most people do their work with us. They come in during Mercury retrograde because it's also the best time to do your inner work. So as much as it's going to be terrifying from a tech and, and, uh, and, you know, contract and communication perspective, it's going to be amazing for doing your work because when one side amplifies, so does the other. So buckle up buttercups, right? (laughs) I can say this is we're recording this, you know, right at the time that Mercury is, it'll it'll get published right at the time Mercury is going retrograde on the first of April, somewhere around there. So, yeah. So good good luck. Yeah, I could say I am happy for the amount of inner work I've done in the last three years because so many things have just kind of dropped off that would have shattered me over the last couple of weeks. You know, all these things I had uh, had a hand in building, had built myself, and just realizing that. You know, we, we talk about that term, the spiritual eviction. It's just happened over, 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 over again. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I was like, something better's on the way. Something better's on the way. Obviously, I'm not meant to be here. I've asked for some big things in life. And, you know, the universe is just shifting some pieces around to make that happen. So, uh, yep. you know, but it's yeah, a lot easier. Always, always. Yep. Um, but, yeah, no, it's a, it's an intense season. So, so today, what are we talking about? What is the well, astral? What is the astral is what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and so the, this is a topic I didn't necessarily think to cover before, but my students in my Wu Yu program are going through their training on what it is to do their different gifts and you know there's there's 30 different gifts that we sort of walk people through how to do it and practicing and seeing if you have proclivity for it and whatever and they they came to me and they're like i you know i don't i don't know what the astral is and i'm like huh i ne- i never defined it and it never occurred to me to define it because i don't think anybody ever defined it for me and uh, Kathy and I run that program together. And she was like, yeah, it never occurred to me to do it either because nobody's ever defined it for me either. And I was like, I wonder why, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's sort of a key component. And yet, how do we not have a definition for it? And so I felt like this episode was really important from that regard because, you know, it's, it's people hear the word astral and they're like, I don't know what it is. Is it a where? Is it a what? Is it a how? You know, what, what is the astral? What is it about? And so that was why I felt like it was so important to do this particular episode, because if you don't know, then how are you supposed to engage with it, right? So let's start with the basics. The astral is an energetic space, okay? So, uh, and you're going to say, well, what does that mean, right? 
So if you have ever done a guided meditation and you have seen yourself going on the guided meditation, you have been on the astral. That's where guided meditations take you. Shamanic journeys, same thing. If you have ever talked to your guides and had a communication with them where you were like standing and talking to them, that was on the astral because that's where those things take place. If you have ever dreamed, that is a, it is not the astral. It is a, uh, half turn from the astral, right? Uh, it is an energetic space. It is in, in another realm, just like the astral is, but it is not the same thing. So if, you know, if you're thinking, oh, well, I know what the astral is, it's dream, dream space, not the same thing. Okay. So it's important to know what things are and what they aren't. Right. Uh, the astral is think of it as, um, it's not technically another dimension, but it, it's easy to think of it sort of as an, a dimensional overlay, right? Uh, where you, and it's the same sort of concept, although again, not the same space as the space, the middle realm that holds the fairies and the, the, the trolls and the dwarves and all the things. Oh my God. Speaking of dwarves, I got to, I got to take a minute. So remember, I've been talking about how the, I'm working on the getting famous thing and, and feeling okay about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. cause that's what I've been told <laughs> is going to happen. And so I've been like, I need to understand what it's like for somebody who's famous, what their life is like. I live in Boquete in Panama. I live in a town of 25,000 people in the middle of freaking nowhere. Guess who was at the Tuesday market on Tuesday? John Rice Davies, who played oh, that's awesome. in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I shit you not. Okay. John Rice <laughs> Davies. And I got to spend a lot of time talking to his daughter who was with him about what their life was about and how their life was and whether or not they had to wander around with security and all the things. Right. And, and that was like the universe sent me a famous person to tell me it was okay. <laughs> This is what happens when you put it out to the universe. I'm, I'm still floored. I was like, what do you mean John Rice Davis is in, is in Boquete? Are you kidding me? And, and to not only have that be the case, but to have there be nobody else waiting in line when Jeff and I got there to, to have a conversation with them. So we literally had like 20 minutes to chat with them. So that's, that is exciting. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. Considering so, I'm built sorry. like Gimli, uh, so considering I'm built like Gimli, I, that's very exciting for me to even hear from this perspective. <laughs> so yeah. that is awesome. Yeah. So this is this is what happens when you when you put things out for manifest. When you you're like I'm committing to this path. I need you to show up and give me what I need. They they send you people, right? And so right. you know, yeah. So I just had to mention that. But and, and that's another thing too, right? Is the um, the akashic records. The Akashic Records are on the astral, okay? So if you've ever had an Akashic Records reading, they've gone onto the astral to go look, your, look you up on the Akashic Records. When you put in a manifestation out into the world, it goes into the Akashic, or into the, the astral, rather. And, and if you do it hard enough, it also goes into the Akashic. So I put this into the Akashic because I made it an identity shift. When I made this an identity shift, it wrote it on the Akashic. The Akashic goes, oh, she's serious about this. All right, well, we'll send her all the things she needs, right? When you just dream about something, you're not writing it on the Akashic. When you are doing it, when you are becoming it, then it's on the Akashic, right? Okay. Now, in the astral, there, the average person in the astral looks like a shadow, they're like shadow figures. So it's just a bunch of dark shadow figures wandering around. The people who are doing energy work like us, we show up brighter. And the more energy work you do, the brighter you appear on the astral. This is why it's so important when you're starting into this work to learn how to protect yourself. Because when you start showing up on the astral, things that live on the astral, good, bad, and indifferent, start to notice you and you can become a target or food or, you know, you can attract other things, right? Uh, and we don't mind attracting the nice things, 
But we also attract the not so nice things because the, the astral, just like every other world, has good and bad things. And that's just the nature of the beast. So That is um, actually uh, what, what drew me to your doorstep. Um, you know, like our, after our first discovery call, I, you know, had, had been, you know, like you had given me some work to work on. And three weeks later, I was getting chewed on so heavy so heavily and you're like you're getting chewed on in the astral and i was like i don't know what that means so this this helps shore a lot of that up what are some of the things that can chew on us over there yeah so so the the lower level things are what i like to affectionately refer to as schmuggies um they are entities right they're just they're the lowest level ones are nothing but um think of it as as um limbic brain lizard brain sort of entities where they live just for what their id tells them right it's just the i need to eat i need to sleep i need to go to the bathroom i need to eat i need to sleep right it's just it's, that's all they do <laughs> um and so for those types of entities they will lap on, latch on to people who have energy that is their food and so if you are negative or you're angry or you're sad, they will, and that's what they eat, then they will latch onto that and consume that. And then when you don't have any more of that emotion to give them, they will then poke you in ways that will cause you to feel that again so that they have more to eat. So this is why you don't want them attached to you, right? Because they'll keep you in that emotion. Now, so that's a lower order and thing, right? I've also th seen aliens will sometimes travel through the astral and mm -hmm. I've occasionally, and I've told this story way long time ago on the podcast about where an alien had been wandering <clears throat> through and got, you know, just sort of hung out in this kid's head and was causing neurological issues. Um, and I looked at it and said, uh, you need to go and you're, har you're harming the, ch the child you're hanging out with. And they were like, oh, my God, I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. And they left, right? But so at, it, different aliens can actually travel on the astral in that right way. And sometimes they hang out with you. And sometimes they hang out in you. And if you don't have proper protections. And, you know, sometimes they do damage. Sometimes they don't. But, you know, they don't always mean to. But it happens, right? And then, you know, demons live here. And ghosts live on the astral. Uh banshees and wraiths and you know and pretty much anything you've heard of that's got an energy aspect to it lives on the astral some are in the upper astral and some are in the lower astral do not get attached to those terms okay people call them upper and lower i have never actually seen a difference uh but the if you had to define the difference between upper and lower it's it's the vibrational level so the lower the vibration they're in the lower astral so the, um, the ghosts, because they're stuck, they haven't transitioned, right? The, uh, you know, anything that intends harm or does, uh, feeds on lower level energies lives there. Upper level astral will have your angels, it'll have uh, people who have crossed over and who have come back into their full soul selves, your ascended masters, things like that will be the upper astral. So working with uh, like building our inner temples and things like that. So would this, you know, when we go within ourselves, this is all part of the astral as well. When we're building that that relationship with the upper and lower worlds, or is that a little bit different? Mm, good question. So it depends upon how you're looking at it. So our center is also the center of the universe. So when you are centered within yourself, you are centered within the universe. So you are the universe and the universe is you, therefore there is a direct overlay, right? Mm -hmm. Does that exist on the astral? Not really. It's your being, your core essence, which is, is different than the location of the astral, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but things like the supernal temple are on the astral. Uh, most places in the world, if they've existed for any length of time, will also show up on the astral. Uh, the, the older something is, the more solid it is on the astral. So a new construction house might appear as an empty land on the astral. Uh, but, uh, you know, a 300-year-old chapel will be solid as all get out on the astral, right? 
So it yeah. just and, and in fact, even like Notre Dame, when Notre Dame burned down, the 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 chapel on the physical burned down, but the astral was still solid because it had been there for hundreds of years, right? So you know now it's being rebuilt, and so it's slowly the the top of the chapel, which is part that burned. Is, is fading some because it's been many years since that happened, but they're rebuilding, and so it's sort of the, in this flux on the astral, right? Interesting. That that's that's kind of how the, the that's kind of the way that works. Right? So how, how does that tie in with like uh, how does that tie in with yeah, something yeah, like right. shamanic shamanic journeying? Um, when you shamanic journey or you lead somebody on a shamanic journey, are you taking them to the astral? Or you know, I've always wondered this, so I'm glad to have you clarify this for me. Yeah. So uh, in a shamanic journey, the, in sh shamanism, there are three different worlds that are generally referred to. You have the middle world, the upper world, and the lower world. And the middle world is the world that is overlaid <clears throat> with our own. And that's where the fairies and the you know, other entities that share this world with us, but slightly phased out of our physical reality. Um, where they live. So when you're in the middle world in a shamanic journey, you're in the physical world of the fae and the elves and the trolls and the dwarves and you know all of the mythic quote unquote mythical creatures. They're not myth myths, but they they exist in our world as myths, right? Um, where all of those live. And so that is not the astral, that is an actual location in the physical dynamic that that's there. When you go into the lower world, you're talking with your spirit animals and things like that. That is, as a, I like to sort of lean into Jungian constructs here because Carl Jung actually talked a lot about the unconscious and the collective unconscious. And as I, you know, when I feel into that world, it is partially the animal, animistic, uh, world where your spirit animals are it's the essence of themselves as as the archetype of the animal right and it is and when you think of archetypes archetypes are uh, you know broader patterns that represent uh, common elements within us so the wounded healer is an archetype the hero is an archetype you know the every animal has their own archetype because you know there's ways in which they are similar across all of the animals right and so your your power animals are coming out of those archetypes and so when you are feeling into the lower realms you're really tapping into the collective unconscious and the archetypal energies of the world and so a lot of what you see in that portion of the world is uh, done in metaphor. It's it's symbolic in a lot of ways. Whereas you know on the on the middle world you don't see as much symbolism because it's much more just you know hey we're just having a conversation and here we are blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But in the lower worlds a lot of it's done on the symbolic level because you are in that collective unconscious archetypal realm. Um, that realm is closer to the primordial ooze of creation than any other realm, okay? Uh, and primordial ooze of creation is another word for the, you know, the undifferentiated chi, right? That it would be the same thing. It's the pure energy where you can just create from that. I call it primordial ooze because that's how I experience it, right? It's, it's, it, it's, Undifferentiated chi is, is a half turn off from primordial ooze, which is where you take undifferentiated chi and you ground it onto the earth. That's when you ground it onto the earth, that's where you get the primordial ooze, right? So that's the, the, the clay from which God created man in the Bible, mm. right? That energy is the exact energy that they're talking about in Genesis, right? So whether you buy into the mythology of that or not, that, that, that's the construct that is being described in, the, in that process. And so they're working with that energy in the primordial ooze area. Okay. Now, none of that is the astral. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's what we're doing. We're defining what the astral is not so we can define what it is. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. So none of that is the astral. The astral, it, now if you go into the upper worlds in shamanism, um, the upper world starts to be on the astral. Okay. So that's when you're talking to your ancestors and you're talking to your guides and things like that. That's in the upper world. In the, the upper world, you are on the astral. Okay, because that is where you are operating in that genre of world. And there's, it's, it's its own world, right? So when we say astral, we're talking about this particular world in, in the energetic field. And it's not like a planet. It's, it's an amorphous location, right? <laughs> but when you are, uh, when you're doing a, a guided journey, right? You are being brought into a vision that is being delivered to you through the person who is guiding the meditation. And that is a vision that has been created on the astral. Okay. That's why you're on the astral. Now, if you're doing a shamanic journey, the shamanic journey may be this sort of vision that I'm talking about, or it may be one of the things we just talked about. So a shamanic journey is sort of a crapshoot as to which, whether you're going to be on, an astro, on the astral or not, depending upon how that happens. So um, I hope that answered your question, Josh. Your screen just went blank on me. So uh, I think here? you forgot to put your phone on Do Not Disturb <laughs> or your uh, computer. It, mm. it. I think he, uh, there we go. All right. We lost him for a minute. Now I can't. All right. So where were we? Um, so we just talked about, uh, the astral and the upper world. Yeah. The upper world and stuff. You need to get closer to your mic, honey. Uh, upper you need world, to bring that uh, closer to you. Cause you're, you're very quiet. Ooh, is that better? Better? Mm, marginally. Are you sure you're on the Yeti? I am on the Yeti. It does say it's okay. on the Yeti. Well, all right. Well, he'll he'll turn the gain up on it. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, where were we? Uh, so I'm I'm going to come back and ask if that answered your question. Okay. We're going to start there. All right, okay. Chris. This is where we're going to start. Okay. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. After uh, after years of trying to figure that out, what the astral isn't, I do feel a lot better um, knowing that I haven't had as much struggle in astral projection as I had first originally uh, thought. So thank you for divulging that for me. Ah, okay. Well, that actually brings up a great topic because astral projection does not have to be done to get on the astral. Those oh. are two different things and they sound like they're the same thing, but they're not. Astral projection is where your spirit leaves your body and is then only connected via a, a silver thread and it travels, your entire soul travels to the astral. That is really freaking hard to do and dangerous because if anybody comes along and snaps that, that thread, you're dead. That is literally what happens, okay? So we don't want to do astral projection. We've had this conversation many times over the course of the podcast. Uh, but what we want to do instead is consciousness projection, which is different than taking your spirit out of your body. It's literally sending your consciousness out of your body. That goes out through your third eye. And so uh, the, the traveling to the astral is like that. Now, do you have to know where you're going? Absolutely not. You do not have to know where you're going. You can just go and wander around. Uh, there is a place called the Purple Plain, and it's called that because it's purple. And <laughs> duh, right? That makes sense. Oh my God, does that make so much sense? If it was yellow, yeah, I'd be now, like, what? Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, Kathy and I are of the opinion that the Purple Plain may, in fact, be, be an alien planet. We're not sure. Uh, we have uh, been there along <clears throat> with a lot of other people that we know. And, uh, you know, for her, she actually, and this, she's, she thinks it's another planet, but I think it's the astral because I'm, I'm fairly, now the planet may exist in the astral, that's possible. So it may be both in that regard, but it is definitely not a physical reality location because she actually has found a place on the purple plane where all of her past lives live. So I think what she's found is the past life review space or the past life pavilion, if you like to watch <laughs> Defending Your Life, which was a great movie from the 80s. Um, and, uh, 
so you know she's found that i didn't find that to me it was just like this plain flat purple space that was kind of like tron right uh, i didn't have all the lines but it was just plain and flat and nothing else so um that exists there the supernal temple is there there's the akashic records are there you know there's lots and lots of different places to go just keep in mind that much like in the in the uh real world there are libraries and there are biker bars and <laughs> you're safer in one than you are in another so be careful where you decide to walk into right some places you need an invitation some places are okay to go all you have to do is look at the door and ask do i need an invitation and the door will tell you it'll give you a oh yeah you could come in or a go away right you'll you'll get that intention so, so you're, you're, are you saying being the do, biggest bad in the room maybe isn't just always enough when there's a whole bunch of biggest bads in the same room? <laughs> I'm saying that it's not <laughs> wise to go and pick fights with things that you don't know about, right? Mm. It's not wise to pick fights in general. You don't need to pick a fight. There's no need to pick a fight. So, you know, do I, do I walk into biker bars in this world and like walk up and push people? No, I don't do that because that's just not smart. Let's not do that. <laughs> it is not smart. Like, that, that, Personal that, experience that, on that one. can of worms. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't need to do that. That's an experience I don't need to have, right? So this is the <clears throat> challenge when you're in your early stages and you're really stuck in your, your, your uh, youthful warrior self where you're trying to prove yourself. You do stupid shit, man. Don't do stupid shit. Okay, just I don't. feel like me and you have there a lot of talks about the stupid yourself. shit. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a fair number of talks about the stupid shit, you and I. Yes, we have. <laughs> yeah, you know, both people who, uh, you know, really kind of were brought up and spent a lot of time in their warrior state. Uh, you know, I think that's a yeah. that's kind of par for the course. Yeah, we've both uh, done a lot of stupid shit in our day. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of stupid shit. Doing less and less each year, though, and that's the beauty. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that is a mark of, of growth. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's really what we're talking about with the astral. People are like, oh, it's so hard to get. It is not hard to get to the astral. It is not hard. If you have an imagination, you've been on the astral. If you imagine something, you are on the astral. That is what the imagination is. Okay? It is literally that easy to get onto the astral. So, okay, so I can hear people saying, okay, but how do I get back? <laughs> I hear that. I'm like, okay, so here's the deal. To get back from the astral, you think, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was so difficult. It was so hard, right? <laughs> yeah. And if for some reason you feel like you can't get back, turn around and look for the silver cord. Because even if your consciousness is out, you will be able to find the silver cord, even if it's just your consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. So check that out and, um, and do that, okay? So you can always grab the silver cord and just follow the silver cord back to your body, okay? Um, it, you're not actually at risk because your spirit hasn't left your body, but your silver cord is still there, okay? Unlike with astral projection. I uh, I just read yeah, something. We, we, the thing that you got, yeah, I'm, I just got to say this. The the thing that you have to remember is that we think about energy work and the astral as uh, we think about physical reality. Do not imagine that that is true. The astral and, and energy work is not limited by physical reality unless you believe it to be true. So. Don't get hung up on, well, I didn't leave my body because I didn't astral project, so the silver cord isn't going to be there. Everything's there all the time, and we're in all time and space at the same time right now, which if that doesn't make your brain hurt, you aren't paying attention. This is why don't put limitations on this stuff because it just ask for what you need and it'll be there. I didn't know how to get to the supernal temple when Kathy and I went in. I asked Grandmother Spider to tell me how to get there, and she said, sure, and she just took me there, right? I didn't get all hung up that I didn't know how to get there, right? I went, oh, I feel like I need a guide. I will get a guide, right? Super simple. I could have just simply said, I am at the, uh, the supernal temple, 
And I would have also just been at the supernal temple, right? This is, it's, it's much easier than you think it is. You put your own, your own limitations on it based on how you talk to yourself. Okay. Now go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah. So I was reading something uh, lately. I was reading a book called the, the ancient secret of the flower of life. And it was talking about some of the ancient Egyptians and how, you know, like Thoth, Thoth the old Atlantean uh, particularly, like he would astro project and this is how they could stay and, and be in their um, bodies for five to seven to 800 years back then. Um, and what he would do is, and this is why they had guards within the pyramids is that, you know, he would have like this thin, you know, just the thinnest thread of that 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 silver cord is what it felt like you were explaining, and that you know, he, you know, he, uh, he talked about that being just a thin layer of ego, and that he could find himself back when he was done, um, and that's I I thought that was pretty interesting because I'd never thought of it like that. Yeah, well, and the reason that the body would last longer is because, and there are monks who can do this now. Um, they can actually pull their energy or pull their physical reality down to a point where they literally are in a hibernative state. And so there's very little actually happening to indicate that there is life in their body. And so your body can last a really long time if you're not actually, if none of your processes are moving. Right. If you're in, the, it's effectively suspended animation. Right. Mm -hmm. So are they actually five or 800 years old or is their body just, you know, coming in and out of, of suspended animation? Right. Right. So that's why that the body would last that long. Interesting. That, you know, you're pulling in universal source energy when you come back. And so that, that actually adds to the health and well-being of the body and things like that. So ultimately, I mean, we don't have to die if we know how to keep ourselves active with energies and, you know, being able to keep ourselves healthy and keep our minds out of the things that cause dis-ease in the body, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So anything else about astral stuff that you want to know? You know, not yet. Not at the moment. I think you've given me enough okay. to personally uh, explore on a whole other level. So I can only imagine that the uh, the viewers got some, um, or the listeners got a pretty uh, pr pretty interesting episode here. What do you think, Kelly? Yeah. So, okay, Kellyism for the day. Astral astral travel. Just do it. There you go. Just just do it. <laughs> just do it. It's plain, simple. It's it's that easy. Uh, so there you go. So that, just just a reminder to to like, share, rate. Please leave us a review. Uh, the reviews help us so much in getting discovered. We so appreciate them. Uh, and by all means, ask us questions. I, I oh crap, I had a question for today, but it's too late in the in the episode. We'll do that on the next one. So we'll um, get you. Somebody had sent in a question for me. So we'll uh, we'll do that next time. But uh, thanks for coming, guys. And Josh, lead us out. All right, that's all we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next week when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Joshua Radwin here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. <laughs>